Hey everyone, Andrea Fasano here and good morning. We are coming to you live from NAB 2016 in Las Vegas and you are watching Be Terrific. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's gonna be a big second day here at NAB and right now I am proud to be hosting, even though I'm Andrea Fasano, <laughs> the Artsis and Fletcher Report with Eric Fletcher. Hey, good morning. And we have Artsis running around the floor so early in the morning. Yeah, so, he's uh, a little busy today. He is a little busy today. You know, that's Welcome the thing back about to the show. That's the thing about <laughs> NAB. Everybody's doing business. Yes. Everybody's doing business. Everybody's <laughs> running around. Yep. I said yesterday when they opened the gates, it was like, release the hounds. <laughs> well, yesterday, I mean, I had meetings all day, so I was kind of stationary in a lot of booths. Still walked eight miles. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Did, did you... Did oh, your yeah, watch yeah, tell you that? Yeah, Apple Watch told me that. So. <laughs> I was going to so say, what is it? It was kind of fun. It was just like, you know, hey, little little technology never hurt yeah, anybody. Yeah, right? So. so how was your first day? It was great. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here also with the SOC, mm -hmm. doing a lot of things with them. Um, I am the technical chairperson of the SOC. So this is kind of my environment. Oh, nice. And um, so uh, we talked to a bunch of manufacturers yesterday. Um, learned a lot about the new Fujinon Cabrio lenses, uh, their whole new series, fantastic price point, really great range of lenses, uh, 20 to 120 and 85 to 300, um, both sub $20,000 lenses wow. and covers 4K. So it was amazing. Um, so Fuji's got that. Um, you know, Panasonic is showing the Vericam LT, their new Vericam. Uh, ran by JVC, they're showing us something that's kind of interesting. Uh, they're doing uh, IP connected cameras, and they're also doing basically one man band sports broadcasting, Ooh. where the camera is generating the scores and everything. Yeah, we and got to see that at CES. Yeah, yeah. Excuse us. <laughs> oh. We have a guest but, on uh, set. We have, yeah, we have a guest. <laughs> Someone's um, excited about our data video cameras. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, uh, but yeah, saw those JVC cameras. It was quite interesting. Um, they're great. They're, and they're, that they're product great. They're looked great amazing when they presented it to us. Well, I mean, it's it's really cool. Now the the OB van goes away. Yeah. So now broadcast is becoming more accessible, mm -hmm. and that's that's one of the interesting things this year at NAB is there's way more broadcast available to people. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't need to have you know a couple million dollars worth of OB van. <laughs> um, you know, so it's interesting. I have some friends in uh, in the Netherlands, and they they originated the Voice. That's where the Voice started, and then it was brought to the United States. And they're doing the entire production of the Voice in flyaway packs. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, and, it's even amazing no, that's still going. <laughs> yeah. No big camera. No big OB van. Everything is housed in like I think I think Job said nine cases <gasps> wow and it can fit in the transit and they're doing the, the full-on sure. broadcast uh, that's unbelievable so you know it's it's kind of interesting you know and, and yesterday michael and i were talking about sports is pushing what the next technology is and right you know I, the, the one concern is is you're kind of putting chiron operators out of business and you know out of jobs and, right and you're you're adding more responsibility to the camera operator but now you're bringing sports broadcasting to a smaller market. Mm -hmm. Now you a can more accessible actually, market. A more accessible market. Uh, now you could actually have have your Corey League games, your Pee Wee, your Squirt games actually being broadcast. Yeah. Even moms uh, and dads your, can do exactly, it. Exactly, on your cable system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really crazy. It's pretty amazing. Yep. Uh, it sounds like you got to see a lot of the floor yesterday. Well, I mean, I kind of did a hit and run and, yeah. and, and saw a lot of friends and was That's like, good. I have two minutes. What's, yeah, what's what the download? What is it? Tell me the best. Because I'm in between meetings. I mean, I had a schedule that was just packed. Right. Um, Kristen That's Petrovich a good way to have me. it, though, I feel like. Yeah. Our, our business stuck. manager at the SOC is totally kicking butt. And <laughs> she's, yeah, and I feel bad for her because it's like herding cats because, right. you know, you've got six camera operators and she's walking around and we're all like, ooh, shiny. Shiny. <laughs> exactly. Oh, shiny over there. <laughs> We met her, the poor girl. I was like, sit, take a break. When we interviewed, I got to interview two of your guys yep. from the SOC. They were yep. fantastic. Yeah, George and Dave. Yeah, George and Dave were awesome. Um, and it's good that we are on this topic because I want to talk to you about something I talked okay. to them about. But yeah, poor Kristen, we were like, just take a moment. I've got them for now. Well, Don't at one, worry. At one point, <laughs> I felt really bad at the JVC demo because they had a camera on this little slider that it had a geared tooth belt on it and kind of magnified its own distance and it was really small oh, wow. and all of us the guys like talking about the camera features and all of us are going look at that slider right, right. that thing's incredible <laughs> i think i can scale that up i think i can make that work for our cameras <laughs> and the guy's like 
that I'm talking about, about the her. <laughs> I built the anti vignetting. Aren't you excited <laughs> about this? I'm like, really yeah, nice yeah, camera. Yeah, great. <laughs> that slider is amazing. Right. But that's, that is something that I brought up to Michael. When we were walking around, we had a really good two days of preview. Right. That's a little behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, you guys got to cheat. We really do. We get, get to that. cheat so well. And it's great for us because. You know, being here in the booth and, uh, you know, I go out remotely, but there's just so much you can access here at NAB. It is so huge. So it's nice that we get that little behind the scenes. But I said to him, you know, sometimes you pass a booth and despite if it has a big name, like you said, Panasonic or some, JVC, something like that, you kind of go, which one's the product? Yeah. Because the, the rigs, the building all around the camera, you're... There's so much going on. Well, it was like, it was crazy. Everybody was talking about, we weren't talking about the Atomos product. Right. We were talking about the giant drone that was flying two very cams that was hung up in their thing. It yep. was like, you know, 20 feet in the we're like, whoa, look yeah, at that drone. Exactly, exactly. You know, but yeah. Or even the rock wall in yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah. That's there. They had a rock wall? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, that's where my eye went. Yeah. I was like, yay, let's go play. I'm like, ooh, airplanes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to each their own, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so we were going back. Let's go back to the SOC, guys. Yep. And also, in the vein of talking about products, I saw something at Edelkrone. I don't know if Michael got to talk to you no. about this. It's mm -hmm. the Jib Plus. Mm -hmm. And what it has is a sensor that keys in on the object and so wherever you move oh, object the jib, tracking. Yeah, 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 you can kind yeah, of follow along it, with it. It sounds like, and it works with any jib. Not th theirs is just the sensor and the. Well, then I know exactly you know. what they're using. They're basically using a uh, uh, a, a flight controller for a drone, and they have object um, recognition in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I actually know him. You know that guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they have. Hey, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, it'd be funny if his no, name was Tom. What, what is his name? Uh, Tom. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> but uh, the drones now are having object recognition so they can do orbit. Okay. Uh, and follow me. So they're probably using, right. and they're probably doing some stability on their head at that point. Yeah. Because it's free. You, if you're using that package, uh, you, you set up a couple brushless motors on it to, and balance the load. And it's right. A, it's a free object. At that well, point. I feel like. You mentioned drones. It's one thing to have that technology in a drone yeah. where it's flying and it's many, many feet from you. But to have it on a jib, how do you feel about that as far well, as the I camera mean, operators? Because you already said you were talking about the Chiron operators losing their yeah, jobs, kind I mean, of. <clears throat> you're still going to need an operator because the shot still has to be visually appealing and interesting. Right. Um, and you're not really going to be able to use that. You know, that's, that's, it's great it's hands for free. sports. It's great for right. sports. Because then the jib op, I mean, I've seen some crazy jib ops doing concerts and stuff, and that'd be fantastic because these guys are running around swinging the heck out of the arm. Right. Um, and a lot of these jibs, you know, I, I come from the film world where we're used to using a techno crane where I've got a guy in the bucket, a guy in the nose, and then I'm on the wheels. Yep. And so there's three of us, and we're swinging it, and we can swing it with huge amounts of precision, get it really close to things. I mean, my, my favorite dolly grip, uh, Daryl Umbler out of Atlanta, you know, he had uh, a 50-footer on an insert car and a 35-footer, and they were doing dueling jibs on Fast 7. Oh, my on uh, Dueling technocranes on Fast 7, swinging them oh, I can't imagine. at 70 miles an hour. I was going to say, how you know, fast? Yeah, they're driving at 70. Daryl's swinging the That's heck out crazy. of it. That's crazy. And, I mean, he's he's awesome. And, and the thing is, is with a really great jib operator or, or crane operator, mm. I barely have to touch the wheels because he's putting the camera where it needs to be. Right. And also now with, with back pan compensation in most of the stuff, and the the smaller jibs don't have back pan compensation, so they're kind of using the object tracking for now for active back pan compensation. Got it. Because the thing is, is when you swing a jib, and if you've got the camera here and you swing it, well, your object's here. Mm -hmm. You want to pan with Having it. it. Yeah. So that for the longest time, that was one of... The, the major skills of an operator was we didn't have back pain compensation. You'd have to sit there and wind the wheel at the rate that the jib's going, and you're talking on an intercom, you're counting down the stops. Wow. So, so when the arm stops, the movement stops, and you don't really see a reframe. And now with auto back pain compensation, it frees us up to be a little more creative in the mm -hmm. shot, not Smoother. have to worry about doing basically a mechanical task. 
Right. What? That's so interesting. <laughs> I'm like, I love hearing about your job. <laughs> Because I work well, on sets too, yeah. and so I've seen all of it in action, and, yeah. and especially getting to talk to George and Dave. He was funny when I said about that because he hadn't seen the <laughs> product yet. And he was like, "Am I out of a job?" <laughs> no, <laughs> you know. And they said kind of the same thing that you did. That there's still you still need someone working, yeah. and you yeah. still need somebody. Somebody with taste mm -hmm. still has to be there operating. Exactly. The camera. You know, it's not a robotic environment, you know, studio news, yeah, that's one thing. Right. And object tracking would be fantastic for it. Because then at that stagnant. point, you know, it, it's, it's you know, you got your anchor, you swing the jib, right. and it stays on the anchor. Hey, that's it. great job. Yeah. You know, and they're already doing a lot of automation. You know, Vitten has their, their motorized pedestals and their, their uh, uh, automated studios. Okay. Um, you know, and and that's the way that news is going. It has gone for years, but you know, that's that's just another tool in the arsenal of something like that. Right. So, uh, did you get to look into VR at all? Uh, played a little bit with it. Um, you know, our our friends over at Teradek, they've got a brand new product called the Sphere, mm -hmm. which is doing a real time encoding from a GoPro, uh, from a GoPro array, and they're doing a real time encoding. And it's really great. That's they were giving cool. away little little uh, Google card or you know, yeah. cardboard glasses. Uh, you can throw your phone in it, tap into their Wi-Fi, and, and actually see it. And that's it, right? Um, and it's pretty cool. I, I'm. Do you think it's cool how accessible that is? Like well, clearly, they're bringing it to you right then and there. I mean, it. The accessibility is great. Right. What I have the issue with is, is, you know, when you put on a set of VR goggles, it goes from being a social experience with a group mm -hmm. to now an individual experience. That's what I think a lot of people have a problem with. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a matter of content creation down the line where we kind of resolve that problem, but I know Michael, I mean, he's been saying, say that you're at a concert and together, well, yeah. and you're both watching it, you know, on the <coughs> from, goggle from a, yeah. So yeah, we're sitting next to each other. But how realistic is that? Well, I mean, it can be done and it has been done. Yeah. <clears throat> the the issue I have with it is it's one fixed focal length, uh, which is well, approximating the human eye. And also, what and what's going to take me and you to sit together and go, yay, let's go to this concert? Yeah, and I really mean, sit there and do did that. Did you see the picture of Zuckerberg when everybody was wearing the goggles? No. And everybody's like laid back in their seat. It looks like so 1984. Like yes. we are, <gasps> you know, we're just going to be drones. Oh, that's funny. And then and he has this maniacal grin on his face, like really, I own I everyone. Got you. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, <gasps> yeah. Where we don't was need that? that? Um, it was actually on Facebook a couple weeks ago. Oh, I need to see Because it was that. at a, it was at a conference where, um, uh, or it was at the um, the unveiling of um, the Oculus when the Oculus okay. went yep. went on sale, and you know it was it was a room of like five hundred people all wearing Oculuses, and, he and was Zuckerberg just, <laughs> just like. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I got to look that up. Yeah. That sounds pretty funny. Yeah. But it, it, that's how it feels a little bit to me as well. I, yeah. And it's very, once you're immersed in it, because I, I rode the uh, Samsung when they displayed the Oculus at right. CES. And so it's very cool. I mean, but I felt like I was in a theme park. Well, and, and of course, it's a roller coaster, which is and part interestingly, of it. interestingly, Six Flags has... Uh, a okay. roller coaster ride where you put on the VR goggles when you go out of the start house, right. and instead of seeing the sights that you normally would, right. now you're in a 3D environment. Wherever that is, that is on the roller coaster, and it's like it's going to be messy when you start cleaning up all the vomit. Well, <laughs> that's funny that you say vomit because I just get grossed out putting on glasses that 300 other people have worn well, all day. That's another problem. Do you know what I mean? I, it's like I'm not. Well, you know, that's as a like, camera I operator, I'm very, very, park. you know, I'm very concerned about what goes around my eye. <laughs> right, right. You know, people look at my eyepiece, my, the chamois comes off the eyepiece. It's like, in yeah, one. I don't think anyone, no that one anymore. talks about this. I know people yeah. have thought about it, but nobody's actually talked about that. And maybe that's just me being skeevy. But I don't well, know. no, I mean, there, you know? And, and there are people out there that are absolute germaphobes. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of like, no you're going to freak the heck mm -hmm. out. I know. <laughs> and so that's exactly, I see it for theme parks and that kind yeah. of thing. It is very cool experience. Yeah. So if you guys get a chance, like. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great definitely experience. Definitely do that. But, it's but just the same thing over and over. Once or twice, I'm like, 
Okay, I'm Absolutely. Yeah. And so I have some friends I know who are creating content for mm -hmm. VR. I would love to see how that actually goes forward with, is it going to be like 3D in a theater where people are just sitting there watching it? I think, I think really what I think, interactive gaming. Yes, for you sure. Know, I mean, yeah. Now, you're going to trash your house when you're playing Call of Duty and you're <laughs> swinging around all and over you know, the shoot. Place. <laughs> We're going to have to have padded walls. Yeah, exactly. You're you going to talk about, over your yeah. couch for, ca it's like for cover and concealment. It's like clockwork orange. Like, you're just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. pretty funny. But, yeah. but it's true. That, but I totally see that. Yep. Um, I don't know. Like, a lot of people are comparing it to the 3D fad and, and how that was just well, kind of. Well, but the 3D fad was, was here, here's you a dirty little secret anything. about the 3D fad. That was television set manufacturer driven. They were like, everybody wants to watch 3D. I don't want to watch the news in 3D. I don't even I don't like movies in it. 3D. Yeah, because I mean, I, I'm the one who plays with the goggles and I take them off and go, really? Look, Can I just watch this? Yeah. Image, two images, two images, two images, two images. I don't know why. I've always been like that since I was a kid. I'm getting into it now more, but it has to be a really, really good experience, like well, a really in, good in movie the, that's made for And the interesting 3D. thing is, is, you know, uh, if, if the stereo isn't done correctly, mm -hmm. a 3D movie is, is very tiring, yeah. you know, if they're running the interoculars at the wrong... And, you know, 3D behind the screen is relaxing yeah. because your eyes get to focus on a farther uh, vanishing point. But 3D in front of the screen, which is what everybody wants to see, they want, you know, yeah. they, they, they want to see it up in their face. Yeah, exactly. That hurts your eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, like I said, it, it takes a certain kind of content, though, even for 3D, yeah. to make it worth my while. <coughs> well, what was really funny was back in the 70s, in the early 80s, Second City Television... They had a skit with John Candy and, and uh, uh, Joe Flaherty where it was Dr. Tongue's 3D House of Horrors and they kept Ooh. doing this Ooh. the whole time. <laughs> Ooh, a scary movie. And they were basically making fun of the whole 3D yeah. thing back in the 70s. Wow. And so when, when, when the 3D crates came out, I kept making, you know, Dr. Tongue's 3D House of Horrors <laughs> comments. In your some own living room. And some people were looking at me like, what? And other people were like, oh, I they totally get the, the reference. That's funny. Yeah. So what are you planning on doing today here at NAV? Um, I know that Kristen is wrangling more cats and has <laughs> a lot of stuff for me to do. We're going to have to bring Kristen on <laughs> yeah, and have her we, we comment. We definitely need to. Um, uh, let's see. I'm see uh, we've, we have meetings with Canon today. We have meetings with Ari today. Uh, more meetings with Panasonic. I mean, it's uh, it's another full day. I'm going to try to see some other booths. Um, I took a real quick blast through the drone center, mm -hmm. which is in the central hall in the upper level. It's like all drones all the time. Yeah. And um, so I want to take a look at that. Uh, basically keeping my eye out for anything that might be new or, or interesting technology for the SSE Technical Awards. Because as the tech chair, you know, we're always looking for people to submit, mm -hmm. um, which can be done at soc.org. I was just going to say. Um, and then there's a link to, to submit for the technical awards. Uh, anybody can submit a company. The company's then contacted. There's a little bit of an entry fee because uh, it is kind of a, a, a pretty in-depth task what we do. We, right. we actually have a panel jury of uh, professional camera operators, and all the manufacturers will come, demo their gear, uh, to the jury, wow. but at the same time, we're doing it as a mini um, techno event where all the members of the SOC can come and get some hands-on and the manufacturer can get some one-on-one -on -one time with other operators and get feedback and, and teach us about new gear also. That's great. So we, we kind of do it as a two-prong two -prong thing. How long have you been doing that? Uh, with the SOC, with yeah. doing that? Yeah, that's This is new for this year. We we changed Great. the way we do the technical awards last year. Mm -hmm. And last year was the first time that we did the panel jury. Um, and it was great. We had uh, 15 demos over two days. Uh, the ultimate winner ended up being Cartoni for the Lambda Head. And it was great um, because Cartoni's an Italian company. And Elisabetta Cartoni, the granddaughter of the founder of the company, um, she came over and accepted wow. the award. And, That's incredible. And, I mean, they were over the moon. They've got the plaque in their booth. Oh, how nice. So, yeah, you got you to gotta go see it. Yeah. Apparently, I need to take a look at it. Apparently, I've got some huge quote in their sales material. And oh, like, wow. Wait a minute. You're <laughs> quoting me. Oh, yeah. God. Uh-oh. I, I hope it was a good quote. <laughs> 
hope it wasn't one of my normal sarcastic quotes. Yeah, right? (laughs) I don't know. Maybe, because in Italian, you never know (laughs) with the way that it's delivered. (laughs) Yeah, maybe I need to start washing everything I say through Google Translate. Exactly. (laughs) That's hilarious. And also, the SOC, let's talk a little more about that. How long has that been in existence? The SOC has been around, I think, 36 years. That's amazing. Um, It's an invite-only organization um, where we try to have the best of the best. Um, And we have a charity, the Children's Eye Foundation, Children's Hospital. Uh, We've given over $200,000 to them in the last 20 years. That's nice. Um, And we've facilitated some breakthroughs in research and some remote surgery options and things like that where we've actually restored the sight of, uh, of a couple of children in third world countries. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so that's our charity. Um, and we also do a lot of education events. Yesterday we had the How'd You Get That Shot seminar from 5 to 6.30. Today we're, get, we're doing another seminar about the, the problem solving and, and how operators and directors and DPs work together. Um, and I'm showing a couple of clips from True Blood, where we had to solve problems awesome. on set. Where is that going to be? That will be at North North Hall 291, okay. I believe, at 5 o'clock um, to 6.30. It's an hour and a half. Six panelists up there. There's a question and answer session. Um, it's a I lot of fun. I want to go. You think Arces will give me a break? I, well, I, I don't see why not. 5 come to 6.30? Yeah, come All right. on up. I might, I might have to go yeah. do that. Because yeah. <laughs> that's break. so interesting. Yeah, I mean, and it's fun because, you know, we've got... People like George Billinger, who do a lot of Steven Spielberg movies, um, you know, and he does a lot of features. I do a lot of TV, and we've got people all in between. Right. Um, you Ranging know, talk, the talking about the problems, you know. Um, and it's, you know, people don't realize that the camera operator, you know, obviously we see it first. We're, we're, we're the first people there, but we have to have a relationship with the actor. We have to have a relationship with the director. We have to have a relationship with the DP. Yep. We have to manage an entire crew of 90. Because, you know, I got to work with the, the, the ADs to get background together, got to mm-hmm. work with sets, props, all this stuff to get stuff done. And it's, it's a ton of fun. And it's a giant team sport. But in the end, um, the operator is both creative but, and a problem solver. Mm-hmm. You know, you know I'm, I just count myself lucky that I played with a lot of Legos as a kid <laughs> because now I can put anything together. I can look at, I, and that's one of the cool things. You get to be able to take a look at gear and go, Okay, the manufacturer says it's great for this, but I think I can use it this way and achieve this shot because, you know, like George was talking at our, at our thing last night, you know, now a lot of directors are using pre And pre is where they'll do the entire movie on a computer with wireframe animation and all that, and they'll do their shot and they'll set the lens and all this. But a lot of times they don't take physics into account. And it's like, okay, how are we going to get the camera from here to here Mm -hmm. because that ain't happening in the space we've got exactly you know and then you know we don't want to say no so then we figure out how to do it Mm -hmm. and that's the cool part well yeah you want to figure out how to do it because then you're you'll become a pioneer in in that method yeah (laughs) yeah no but that's really cool i mean like i had a i had a situation a long time ago on a tv series and we were on a techno crane and they're usually only operated with the wheels and the problem was we had a shot that started down and twisted and it had to rotate, tilt up and whip pan over to get a guy coming out of a room. It would have been very, very difficult to do with the wheels. And Was there a reason that it was pointed down? Oh, yeah, because uh, a character had, uh, she had fallen on the floor. Okay. She was having, you know, visions. And, right. And, you know, another character was going to run and, and save her, you know, heard her screaming, run from the second floor, down the stairs, oh, into geez. her. And then as he's running, we're tracking down, we're pushing in, and then the camera's scraping the ground looking up at the group. Oh my gosh. So we're starting high, you know, I mean, it's a big swing. A lot swing, of movement. A lot mm-hmm. of movement. And I'm sitting here, and, and I knew this was gonna be on the second day of the of the, my first season on the show. Oh and it's like, I gotta get this shot or I'm so fired. There you go. Yeah. And so I talked to my friends over at Panavision Remotes, because that's where we were getting the stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, you know, you got that, that accelerometer-based box that goes on a fluid head to control a remote head. What if we put it on a handheld rig? And then I can be in the corner positionally with a monitor, and I can, just, I can emulate the exact move, and the head will follow me. 
and the really crazy stunned. thing is, is the 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 manager over at Panda Remotes, Andy Romanoff, he was like, "That's a great idea. I never <laughs> thought about that." And another buddy of mine was in Panavision prepping, and he saw our setup, and he was like, "That's a really cool idea." <laughs> You know, and that's how Sometimes ideas Sometimes, though, happen. until yeah. you need it, you don't know that it can do exactly. that. Exactly. He was like, he was like I never thought of using those parts that way. Right. And I was, like, grasping at straws out of desperation right? going, I got to get this shot. But that's yeah. what's so amazing about this entire industry and the relationships that you create. And like you said, your friends at the manufacturing companies, your friends yeah. on set, everybody kind of works together because you all have the same purpose. You want to yeah. produce a result. So. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is, like, You'll see a lot of operators here and talking to camera manufacturers, and a lot of people will go, well, that's the purvey of the director of photography. Well, the sensor is his purvey. Mm -hmm. I have to make that box work. Yeah, exactly. And, and nine times out of 10, it's the operator that introduces new technology to the DP because we're the geeks. Yeah. We're right? the guys. We're the guys. You're the around. guys here at NAB. Yeah, we're the guys <laughs> who are around going, that's, your camera's cool, but that's even cooler. Right, you know? right. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, and, and, but, that's part of the coolness of, of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Eric, so nice to get to talk to you this <laughs> yeah, morning. Definitely. I'm glad Michael was busy running around on <laughs> AB. Thank you so much, Eric Fletcher. You guys are watching Be Terrific. Stay tuned. We have so much more coming to you live. Day two of NAB 2016 here from Las Vegas, Nevada. We will be right back with more.